Hi everyone, I'm Miss Caitlin and welcome to Crafty Kids Week 2. This is our Younger Artist session for grades pre-K through 5. Today we're going to be doing a lesson from my website, which is right here and also in the comments. Um, it's going to be about warm colors and cool colors. Now, have you guys ever heard of warm colors and cool colors before? If you haven't, we're about to find out what they are. So if you go to my website and you scroll all the way down to grades pre-K through 5, um, you're going to find warm colors and cool colors and click on it. And it'll take you to this page. It's a PDF. Um, and you'll find that I have step-by-step -step how to do the lesson and also some vocab to learn. But let's talk about some of that vocab. Vocab is short for vocabulary and vocabulary words are new words that help you understand things that you might be learning about. Our first vocabulary word is warm colors. Warm colors are colors that make us think of heat or things that are hot. And they are red, yellow, and orange. If warm colors make us think of things or places that are very, very hot, can you think of some things or places that are very hot? Let's do some brainstorming. For me, I think of fire. Fire is very hot and it has all three of the warm colors in it. I also think of the desert. Can you see the warm colors in the desert? Cool colors are colors that make us think of the cold or things that are cold. Some examples are blue, purple or violet, and green. So for cool colors, we're thinking of things that are very cold. Can you think of things that are very cold? Hmm, let's think about some together. I immediately think of the Arctic, particularly with the Northern Lights or Aurora Borealis. Can you spot all three of the cool colors here? Or I think of the sea, the ocean. If you go back to the page from my website, um, you're going to find my instruction sheet with the finished product on it. Um, you're going to have either a warm color or cool color animal on a cool color or warm color background, but they're going to be opposites. So the background is going to be opposite the foreground. And we'll talk about what those words mean in just a little bit. Um, so now let's kind of backtrack. So if we go back to our vocabulary words, you'll see the word background. And the background is the area or scenery behind the main object in a drawing or a photograph. And the foreground is that main object or the focal point that is nearest to the viewer. It's often the main focus and the most important part of a drawing, painting, or a photograph. That might not make sense right now, but it will in a couple minutes. Um, the first thing you're going to do, though, is you're going to think about an animal that you really like and then think about where that animal could live. Doesn't have to be realistic. You could have a penguin living in a volcano. Then you're going to grab some scratch paper and make a quick sketch. You're going to place that animal in the foreground and your, your background is going to be the place where it lives. Um, so here's my example over here and I have a goldfish living in an underwater cabbage farm. So that's kind of silly, right? <laughs> and if you look at it, you'll see that the goldfish is in the front of the picture and my underwater cabbage farm is in the back behind the goldfish. So my goldfish is in the foreground and the underwater cabbage farm is in the background. It's really important to sketch out your ideas before you get started. So I'm going to draw a rectangle on a scrap piece of paper and that's going to represent my whole paper. I'm going to draw my horizon line, which is usually where the land meets the sky or in my case, it's going to be where the sand meets the rest of the water. I'm going to put in some seaweed, kind of decorate my background. I'm going to kind of scatter them all over the place, like some big and some small. I'm also going to add in some layers of sand, kind of sand dune looking things. Now I'm ready to start drawing my foreground, which is going to be my fish. So I'm going to roughly sketch in his body here. So I have an idea of where he's going. There I go. Looks good. 
I was going to put my cabbages in, but I decided against it. So this one's going to be a little bit different than the one on your paper. So here, just a reminder, your animal is the foreground and the rest of it is the background. So now I need to decide, is my foreground going to be warm or is my background going to be warm? I think I'm going to make my foreground warm colors, my goldfish, and then the background makes sense to be cool colors since it's underwater. So remember, you want your foreground to be opposite your background. So if your foreground is warm colors, your background will be cool colors. So here's the example that I made before. You can see that my fish is warm colors and my background, the underwater cabbage farm, is in cool colors. So now I'm going to go back to my scratch paper and I'm going to go in and kind of block in where I want those warm and cool colors to go. So now I think I am ready to open up my craft kit from the library. In this week's kit, you're going to find an egg carton. And in that egg carton, there is some paint and some brushes. Um, you'll notice that there's only blue, yellow, and red. Now those colors are the primary colors, blue, yellow, and red. If you mix the primaries together, you get colors that are secondary colors, and those are orange, green, and purple, or violet. You also have some white and black paint to make shades and tints of colors, and we'll get to what that means in just a couple minutes. Um, you also have some different brushes here. There's a big brush and a couple little brushes for details. And you can take your paint and you can mix them in these holes in the egg carton. So if you want to mix those secondary colors, orange, green, and purple, that's where you'll do it. You also have some construction paper here of different colors. You can use that to cut out shapes. And of course you have some crayons. So let's get started. I'm going to use this blue piece of construction paper as my background. Then I'm going to get some of my purple construction paper to make these sand dunes. I made these by cutting wavy lines in my paper. And in case you missed our tutorial last week, this is how we use scissors. We're going to make a peace sign with our hand, and we're putting those two fingers in the larger hole of our scissors, and the thumb goes in the small hole. And you're cutting away from yourself, not towards yourself. Now I'm going to grab some glue and get to work. And you might have a glue stick or a glue bottle at home. Either one will work. And it's really important for this part to lay out where you want your pieces to go and to remember that when you start gluing, you want to start gluing from the back. So you want to glue down the piece that's in the back first. Now remember, when you use a glue stick, you're not putting it all over the paper. You're going to only put it on the piece that you're gluing. So I'm going to flip this over and put it on the back. Now I'm going to flip it back over and make sure I have it exactly where I want it. I'm going to stick it right down on my paper. Now if you're using a glue bottle, you can carefully outline your piece of paper or just use a couple dots. The rule of thumb is dot dot dot, you don't need a lot. I'm going to use my glue stick though because my glue bottle is all dried up. If you need glue, make sure you ask for some when you pick up your craft kit from the library. We'll be happy to give you some. Now I have all my seaweed pieces cut out, um, but I don't want them to just be plain looking like that. So I'm going to either add my crayon or my paint to it to add some texture. Um, so here is where I'm going to do some color mixing with my primary colors. I'm going to mix together yellow and blue to make, can you guess? <gasps> Green! So now I've got the textures painted on. I note that I did it on a piece of scrap paper, so that way I'm not getting paint all over my beautiful picture. Now I'm going to go back to my original sketch, and I'm going to break down my animal into basic shapes. So if you notice, the body of my fish is kind of a circle and his fin is kind of a rounded triangle, his tail is almost a heart, and his top fin is kind of like those wavy lines that I cut out for my sand. So no matter what animal you chose to do, um, you can break down your animal into basic shapes to help you cut them out. So now I've got my basic shapes cut out and I once again want to add some texture. So I'm going to mix up another shade of orange really quick and I do that by mixing yellow and red together and I'm just going to mix it right in my yellow cup because I'm almost out of yellow. And I don't think I'll need yellow again. I might also add some shades and tints of a color to add some highlights and shadows. So a tint is a mixture of a color with white so it makes the color lighter. 
A shade is when you mix a color with black, so the color is darker. So here is my finished product, and yours will probably look a lot different than mine because you can make whatever animal you want on whatever background you want. So you don't have to make a fish and you don't have to have it underwater. You can do whatever you want. So I hope you have a lot of fun with this and I hope you get those creative juices flowing and you come up with something totally creative and totally original. I can't wait to see what you do. Make sure you have your parent or guardian share your finished work with us on our Facebook page in our Crafty Kids group. One more thing before you go. Make sure that cap is back on your glue stick or if you use the liquid glue, make sure the lid is closed shut. Um, make sure you wash your paint brushes, wash their hair. Throw away your scraps of paper, or if they're large enough, put them somewhere to reuse them. Make sure your lids are back on your paints, if you still have some left, so you can reuse those later. Or if you're done with them, just throw them out. And that concludes this episode of Crafty Kids. I'll see you later.